Good afternoon, ladies and gents. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Good afternoon, Nail Tech friends. <laughs> yes. It's Natasha, Ugly Duckling Master Educator, and Crystal, Ugly Duckling Master Educator, here with you on this very fall like afternoon. You know it. It's fall here for sure today. It's raining. Crystal is in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> And I am too. It's good PJ weather for sure, but it's also great weather to create a super cute and easy fall design. I agree with you. Yeah. And we're going to be jumping in with our color gels here. I was working on this or with this palette from home too, so don't mind. You can see my little brush strokes, but I, if you've watched any of my lives before, I talk about how I always mix too much product. So this is a prime example, <laughs> and I didn't want to waste it, so I actually, just quickly, should I tell them about my little, my idea? Oh, give them that little <laughs> This is This is not fancy by any means, you guys, but these little, like, Loctite containers that have the, the lids that kind of lock on the side, I actually put my palette in there and uh, to keep the air away from it so it doesn't um, let any dust get in my gels and it keeps my gels nice and fresh, so... Um, that's a little pro tip for you if you ever like me and mix too much product all at once. But this is what we'll be doing today. We are going to do a nail similar to this one here with this design. This was hand painted all with our Ugly Duckling color gels and I mixed in a little bit of um, one of our gel polish shades in with my color gel and art gel just to create um, some more earthy tones. And this is a prime example here. You guys, I used a selection of um, color gels. I listed them in the description um, of this video. But just how you can use what we have in our line and mix and match. So I've mixed a bunch of different tones just from a few different colors. Um, so when I say like the possibilities for colors are endless, I truly mean it. You guys can really customize these lines together. So I actually got this um, design from um, a lady on Instagram. Her name is uh, Jess's Paper Co., I think, or something like that. And she creates paper products. And she um, digitally drew this design. And I thought it would be really cute for fall on a set of nails. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that today. Oh, and before I forget, you guys... Check out these crystals. These are our new um, Clear as Mud crystals in different colors. So here we've got um, Montana, which is this beautiful, deep, deep blue color. It's like a deep, deep denim blue, I think. And then we've got the beautiful Colorado Topaz right there. Yeah, it's so beautiful, Natasha. I love those colors mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. They're so sparkly in person, too. So if you haven't had a chance to try our Ugly Duckling Clear as Mud crystals yet, in clear or A and B or uh, A and B, A B <laughs> or any of the colors that we offer, I highly suggest you give them a go because they are very, very sparkly and they, we've got some great color choices too. So we're going to go ahead here. We're going to hop in. I've got my palette here. I've done one coat, you guys, of um, color gel number 23 and it's this beautiful um, deep kind of steel gray with a little bit of blue tint to it. It's a really, really pretty color. Mm -hmm. um, very complimentary to the color palette we're gonna be using here today. We've got some browns and some greens and some um, yellows, so we're gonna just hop into it. So an, a design like this can kind of look overwhelming at first because there's so much going on, but if you break things down into sections and kind of work from the back up, um, it can be a lot less intimidating. So what we're going to do first, my favorite thing to do is I always start with the larger elements. So we're going to start with the leaves. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my um, striper brush. Nice long stripe. This is um, our smaller striper brush of the two. We've got our striper and our striper two. Our striper two is um, slightly longer. Actually, it's a, a bit longer than our striper, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, um, you go ahead. Sorry, sorry I was just going to say, no. Melissa just made a comment. This is dangerous. Online placing an order and as she watches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going, oh, sorry. I don't, I didn't wipe my brush properly before I stored it. That's bad on me. So let me just wipe out the excess product in there. I want to be able to load my brush nicely because we want to create some nice lines. So I'm going to put my brush in my yellow here. This color I mixed using number 166 gel polish and some of our white art gel uh, to create this kind of soft um, muted mustard yellow. So when I'm loading my brush to do um, 
striping of any sort, whether it's for the leaves or um, long lines or anything, you don't want to go into your uh, color and just scoop up a bead or a bunch of product and have a bead on the end of your brush. You're not going to get a consistently even line that way. So what you do or what I do is I put it in my product and I kind of just gently roll the bristles in there and then I'll go to a separate section of my palette and wipe off any excess. And of course, if I need to reload a little bit, I'll do the same. And that way, the product is distributed evenly across the brush. There's no bulb of product at the very tip, and we're going to be able to create a nice line that way. So I've got my brush loaded. We've got our one coat, one coat mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> of our color gel here. And I'm going to go in first. And like I said, we're going to start with the biggest um, elements first of our design because then we can go ahead after and fill in with the smaller ones. So we're going to go ahead and do our um, yellow leaves here, our green leaves kind of down here, and then fill in with the little mushrooms and the little flowers. Okay. So let me just crouch down here. Get nice and close. If my head gets in the way or anything, let me know. Yeah. Okay. So first things first, I'm just going to place the tip of my brush down, and then as I'm dragging downwards, I'm going to apply more of the brush to the surface of the nail, and I'm just slowly dragging the brush and letting the brush um, do the movement for me and do the work. You can also, um, sometimes I'll catch myself actually kind of pulling the nail away too. So here I've got nice um, coverage here, but I want to get a little bit more coverage of the color down here. So whenever you break a line off, you never want to start where the line has broken, if that makes sense. You want to start higher up. So I'm starting higher up here, making contact with the nail, and then using my brush to pull downward. Just getting more color on there. Next we're going to go in, and this time because we're not going to be, um, we've got the line down, but now we want to create the leaves. So I am going to get a little bulb or bead of the gel on my brush. And I'm going to go up to the top here. We're going to create this very um, first leaf. So what I'll do is I'll plop the bead of gel down. It's not a lot, right? We want to make sure that our product cures properly. So a little bit goes a long way with our products. The color payoff is really great. And um, you don't need a lot to uh, get a nice opaque coverage. So I've just placed a bead down. And basically what I'm doing once I push the bead down is I kind of work out to one side a little bit. Pull down to the stem, same with the other side, work out to the side a little bit, pull down to the stem. So now we've got our first leaf, and we're going to replicate this and repeat this all the way down. So I'll start a little bit away from the stem, place my bead down, wiggle a little bit. I'll go out to one side, pulling that product out to a point. Then the same thing on the other side, wiggle out and pull down to a nice point at the stem. Now to get it to go to a nice point, when you're pulling towards the stem, just release the pressure off your brush so that the very tip of the striper brush is doing most of the work. If I was doing a client, I'd get them to flip their hand the opposite way now because I want to bring the tip of the leaf to a bit of a point. So same thing, I'm going to angle my brush upwards a little bit because I want most of the pressure on the very tip. We're going to go into the center of the leaf to grab some of that product there. Very light pressure, we're pulling it outward and releasing to create that nice point. So we're gonna just repeat this all the way down. And you guys can um, make these leaves bigger if you want. I actually think I might because we wanna take up some more space. So I'm just gonna spread that product out a little bit more on either side. We'll match this one on this side a little bit bigger. Pull that out, and the one on top will make a bit bigger too. Were any of you here yesterday with us when Crystal was demoing our new gel polish colors that are releasing? October 1st? October 1st! Very exciting! Six new colors! <laughs> They are beautiful. They are. And, you guys, 
We're releasing them um, in a six pack also at a 10% discount. So if you buy all six at once, you get a 10% discount. And the awesome thing about that too is that um, a portion of proceeds from each six pack sold will actually be donated to cancer research. Yeah, that's uh, it's a great cause. It is a great cause, absolutely. Okay, we're just working our way down here. And part of me of my sniffles, I uh, notice my nose gets a little sniffly sometimes from my mask, so. All right, and as I'm working down here, I, I am making the leaves slightly bigger as we get um, closer to the base of the stem. You don't have to, you can keep them all uniform. And I'm not really being worried if they're all um, completely even, like this one's angled up a little bit more, this one's a little bit down, that's okay. Corman says, why do you make it look so easy? Um, can I be honest? Some, <laughs> sometimes it's not. <laughs> yes, but to, to be honest, Natasha, because for me, I'm not an art painter yep. um, like you are, but having the right tools yes. and the right products really help with... It's, it's very true. Having the right tools, the right brushes, the right um, like gels to paint with, having colors that are super pigmented and... Um, also, I find with the color gels too, as I'm painting with them, they're not moving anywhere. Mm -hmm. Just like our art gels and our gel polishes too, they're all really great for art. So you're absolutely right. Having It's a combination, having the great products to work with and practice. And don't get me wrong, in no way did I mean taking away from Natasha's skills. No, no, no. Because you're highly no. skilled. Well, thank but you. for those who maybe feel intimidated or struggle with art, knowing that it's very possible to yes. do so and achieve a certain look, if you have, you know, right products and tools to use. Totally. And I think a big thing, too, for people whenever we do art classes is I always try and say to them, you know, it can be intimidating at first when you're first looking at an overall design and seeing all of this stuff all at once. It's like, oh, my gosh, where do I start? But once you break it down into steps, it becomes a lot more manageable. Okay, so I'm going to um, leave our, my yellow leaves here, and I'm actually going to do a little cluster of green ones. I might make these ones a little bit smaller. So again, we're gonna start with our stem. We're gonna have them kind of going opposite direction. So I'm just pulling down on my brush, letting that brush really do the work for me. Once I've got my stem established, I'll go ahead. And you guys actually let me know because I thought about this when I was um, working at home. If it's hard to see um, because of the reflection of the nail, what I can do is I can actually cure these and then seal it with our mat and then I can continue painting. So let us know in the comments um, if you're hanging out with us right now, if it's okay working on the shiny surface or if you want me to seal it mat and then continue so you can see a little bit better. So we're just repeating the same steps as we did with the yellow um, leaves and stem. We're just making these leaves a little bit smaller just so there's some um, interest on the nail. Not everything is the exact same. Because this is a mixed pattern, we want a little bit of difference between elements if they're similar. Okay. Pull that to a bit of a point. I would flip my client over, <laughs> flip them around, just so I can get a better angle and create that nice leaf. Erin Kinney, if I yes. pronounce that pr correctly, um, I love how your palette always looks fun, like <laughs> a, a Bob Ross palette. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a big compliment. I'm always mixing and it's funny, I'll mix colors and I'm like, yeah, that's good. That I, that's all I need. And then as I'm working, I just keep mixing them all together to create more shades. So I'm happy I found that little hack of um, storing it in a little airtight container. If mm -hmm. if I don't have any containers on hand and if, if I'm like normal, mix way too much product, I don't want to waste it. And especially if you're in the middle of doing a set like this, if you're working on tips or something and you know you're going to be going back, yeah, then you can just store it and then go back. Now, I'm going to just quickly say something. I'm sorry if I missed it, but just having a look at the fine lines and those little leaves, how well that color coverage over top of a dark color. Yes, that's a great point. Yes. That's a really great Very, point. It gets a solid coverage. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, so again, I'm working with our color gels here and I've got my whole little Bob Ross palette, like Erin <laughs> <Aaron> says, <laughs> and these colors really do cover very, very nicely. Um, I, like I said, I even mix some of our 166 gel polish with a little bit of our white art gel, I believe, or our white color gel. I can't remember off the top of my head to be quite honest, but either way, the coverage is beautiful. Mm -hmm. This whole set was created with these colors here on this palette. I've listed them in the description of, um, below the video or above. I can't remember exactly where it is, but all of the information is there. <clears throat> so we've gone ahead and um, did we hear anything about um, if it's okay working over the shiny surface or are you guys having problems seeing it all? No one so far said Great. anything, so I think we're good. Okay. So let's go ahead, let's finish these leaves um, and then we'll move on to the next section. So um, we've gone ahead in the demo here, in the display set here, and we've just used a darker shade of the yellow and a darker shade of the green to create some little um, uh, veins or creases in the in the leaf just very very simple I'm gonna go ahead here and on my palette I've got I actually used the darker green for my leaf in here instead of this shade but that's okay so then I'll use the opposite shade here this color here that I mixed and we'll do the vein in that color and I'm um, loading my brush very very sparingly because we want super super fine lines so Go ahead here, I need to crouch down so I can see using the very tip of my striper and like no pressure. I'm basically just lightly dragging the brush over the, um, the leaf. Working from the stem outwards towards the very tip of the leaf. We'll work our way down. Little to no pressure. Just loading a little bit of that product on my brush. And again, good news, everybody. October 1st, 20% <gasps> off of our color gel. So if you've been thinking about it or you want to stock up, uh, increase your color selection, yep. great time to purchase. For totally. the full month of October, you will receive 20% off our color gels. All of October. Mm -hmm. That's a great deal. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to stock up in a few of my, my favorite shades, I think. <laughs> oh, for sure. Okay, let me just get this into focus here. Uh, kind of. There we go. Okay, so now I'm taking my darker mustard here that I've mixed. Loading up my brush, and we're going to do the same thing. A little super easy little line for a vein on each leaf. So... Place our brush down, lightly drag, release. And when you have a moment, Natasha, yes. we have a question on how to prepare your brushes. Oh, like a brand new brush? Yeah, just maybe, yes. Okay. I, I think so. Um... So whenever I get a new art brush, or well, whenever you receive any of our brushes, there will always be um, kind of like a starchy mixture in the bristles. So the most important thing you can do um, is actually to remove that. And when we ask or when we suggest, or oh my goodness, <laughs> let me try again. Yeah. Um, to remove that starchy substance from the bristles, we suggest just taking um, either a fresh piece of paper towel or a, a fresh uh, wipe and um, gently working the bristles between your fingers with the wipe in between your fingers just to break the starch a little bit. Mm -hmm. Then usually what I'll do is I'll take um, the handle of a brush and I'll kindly just work the bristles very gently back and forth like this. Um, and as you're working it, you'll actually see the particles start to float off of the brush. So just keep an eye on that. Keep doing that until you notice that there's not much coming off the brush. I'm just gonna put this in the lamp for care. Um, and then once you've um, worked out all of the starch for our art brushes i always suggest taking some of our tacky top and i put it on a palette um, and then i'll just really gently work my bristles through that tacky top and this is how we also suggest cleaning your art brushes too because they are so delicate and so um fine this is a great way to clean your brushes i don't know if you can see but there's actually some um of the darker yellow gel polish, or sorry, color gel coming out here. 
The tacky top will help release any buildup of um, gel or color or pigment or anything in your art brush. And it'll also help keep the shape of the brush. Um, so these brushes I've actually had for quite a while and that's because I try very hard to um, make sure I condition them all the time when I'm finished working with them with some tacky top and I always place the cap back on for storage just making sure that they're kept safe in your drawer. We do have a really great video on our YouTube channel of how to prep and um, clean all of our brushes from our acrylic gel to art brushes so I do suggest checking that out too. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so let's move on now. Should we do the little flowers or should we do the mushrooms? Mushrooms. I think the mushrooms are so <laughs> cute. Okay, let me just grab my Painter 2 brush here. This is one of our newer brushes too. And I've mixed kind of this creamy off-white shade using a couple of our uh, color gels also. Um, again, super versatile. So I'm using my Painter 2 brush and I'm picking up a little bead of that product. And let's put a little mushroom up here. So let's go ahead and start with that. I'm going to start with the cap of the mushroom. So I'm kind of doing like a half circle. Ooh. And the cute thing about this design to you guys is because it's kind of supposed to look like it's hand drawn. It's not supposed to look like perfect, um, smooth, smooth lines. So if you have a little bit of a wobble, which is perfect because I had coffee before I came on here. <laughs> <laughs> um, it'll work in your favor. It just makes it look more whimsical and um, it just kind of suits the, the whole vibe of the, the pattern. So I'm just using my painter um, two brush here and I'm creating, oh, I got a little fuzzy probably from my sweater. Hmm. Just creating kind of a half circle almost like a three-quarter circle, but the, the top is more domed for sure, and the bottom is just kind of slightly curved. Okay. Natasha, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. Um, my question for you is what, why are you so inspired by doing like floral and these types of um, patterns. Is there a reason why you're so drawn to them? That's a really good question. I just actually. want to get to know you. Even you want to I get know. to know me better? You know, I know. Uh, I know. Just for the viewers. I really enjoy this kind of design because the nice thing about this is even though you have a design set forth in front of you, you can still, as you're painting, your own style and your own um, way of doing things will kind of shine through. Mm -hmm. And I find these kinds of designs less intimidating to teach people that aren't necessarily comfortable with doing art because it doesn't have to be precise. We're not doing geometric designs. We're not doing precise, precise line work where everything has to be perfect straight down the middle. So I find this is a really nice um, style to kind of work with and it's my favorite too. Mm -hmm. Let's do another little mushroom down here. But this time I think we're gonna um, keep the stem because we want to make sure that not everything is centered on the nail. It's okay if stuff comes off the side. It just makes everything look more whimsical and make it look like a full pattern rather than we just kind of tried to shove everything on the nail and get everything showing all at once. Okay, we've got our little mushroom cap here. just looking at the overall composition and balance, keeping in mind that we still have um, some little flowers to do, like the little um, kind of ready brown flowers and the little white simple flowers too. So let's keep some space open for that. Let's go ahead and um, because I'm confident our color gel isn't gonna move, I'm gonna go ahead and we're going to create the, um, the ready kind of brown flowers. So I'm using my Omni tool here. I'm using the larger side of my Omni tool and I'm going to go in in my lighter shade of this ready brown that I've mixed. And to create one of the petals here, I'm actually going to do three dots, two kind of um, in the similar um, line, like in the same line. And then one we're going to do slightly higher up. And then we're going to kind of just join them all together. And I'm even going to use my dotting tool just to pull the product down to fill in that petal. We're going to create this or uh, repeat the same step on this side here. So one, two, and then a third one, a little bit higher up. 
join them all together and pull this to the center. So we've got kind of half of the flower here. Need a little bit more there. Not quite over enough. There we go. Okay, and let's do. Let's do part of one poking off over here. So this one will probably just be a few little dots, nothing too crazy. Basically, we just want to have this color on the nail in a few little areas, at least two, um, just so it's not just smacked right up there. And it's you have to think kind of of overall balance, but it doesn't have to be precise. And then maybe one more smaller one here. Just repeating those steps. Picking up fluff from my sweater. There we go. <laughs> okay. Now, you know what? I'm going to keep going because we've, nothing is moving and I'm feeling brave today. I feel like I'm, I'm in control and I'm not going to smush anything. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually, I think I forgot my white art gel, but that's okay. Let's just go ahead and we're going to use the soft, um, off white that we have here because we're going to be adding details to the mushrooms anyway. So they're not going to be just this one color. Okay, I mean, this little fuzz is bugging me. Just one second here. Mm. Wherever there's gel, there's always dust and fuzz. <laughs> Without fail. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's just add a little bit to my brush or my dotting tool here. And we're just going to do a small dot. Small dot. We're doing, we're throwing it back to when we were in nail school yes. with the daisies, the dotting tool daisies. That is so true to that. <laughs> Before nail art really, really took off. Then I'm going to take my painter tube brush here and where those dots are, I'm just going to pull them into the center. Create a little daisy. I was going to say, I think when we were, when we were back in our education 14 mm -hmm. years ago, um, it was just glitter started coming out, I oh, think. Oh, yeah. And maybe colored acrylics. And that was like the big art back then. Yep. Nail art decals and then this kind of technique for sure. Oh, yeah. It's amazing to see how the techniques over the years have completely changed. I we had we kind of laughed um, when in was it in the summer or the spring when um, like crushed shells and everything started mm -hmm. to become popular again. Remember? Oh my goodness, the smell of those things though when you file them. When, I know. <gasps> and I used to have a client who loved her whole like doing a full French of crushed shells. Oh my goodness. So the smell it would. Oh my goodness, it was so bad. You would need to have a separate e file bit. For yes, because sure. it dulled your bit so mm -hmm. bad. Anybody in the comments, um, do you guys remember using crushed shells or did you have any clients um, request them lately? Because I know they made their rounds again for sure. It's mm -hmm. funny to see when things come back around and people that are newer in the mm -hmm. industry don't realize that it was like popular before too. So it's kind of funny when they're like, oh, this new technique or this new design. It's like, oh no. It's been here for a bit. <laughs> but then that makes us feel old. Cause it's like, oh no. No. It's making its way around. That means we've been around now twice. Totally. We're getting these little daisies in place here. Super, super simple. You could even take your painter brush because I don't have quite enough product right there. Okay, I must say this is absolutely stunning, Natasha. You like it? Are you, guys, are you guys liking this design as much <laughs> as me? Because I just love to watch everything she is doing. It's coming together so beautifully. It's cute when it all comes mm -hmm. together for sure. So we do have some open space, but guess what? We're going to add some tiny little polka dots in the background. And we have some outlining and some detail to add. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this in the lamp for here. And for those of you who haven't used our color gel before, they are a 60 second cure in our LED lamp. We've got my lovely Bob Ross palette here. This is what we're doing today. I hope you guys are having a good day so far. It's a glorious day. <laughs> she says yeah. glorious because it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kathy commented there was only clear gel when uh, when she started. Oh my so gosh. That's crazy. That is crazy. And even Yvonne, Mother Duck, mm -hmm. we, for those who know her as Mother Duck, 
she would actually have to manipulate the acrylic on the nail in order to work it. So, like kneading it like dough. And, yeah, that's right. And it, it set really fast, she said, too. 100%. So product development has definitely changed over oh, the years, yeah. too. Oh my gosh. I remember to like get I, my my first set of nails, my first real set of nails besides getting the Sally Hansen kit from Walmart and doing them myself. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> Before education. Oh, jeez. <laughs> but my first set of nails is from my mom for my 14th birthday and I remember watching Megan my nail tech who I actually ended up working with years later. Right, yeah. Um but watching her do it and thinking, "Oh my gosh, I could do that. That looks so easy." <laughs> totally. And then sitting down my first nail class with Christical for those of you don't, who don't know, Christical actually taught me how to do nails 14 years ago. That's when we met. I know it's so crazy. Oh my gosh. But then sitting down and actually going to pick up my first bead of acrylic, I was like, "Oh dang." Yeah. <laughs> I take that back. I, I messed up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do the detail on our little mushroom here. So I want to be able to see part of the underneath of the mushroom. So I am going to just kind of come where the, um, the dome part here kind of starts to curl under. And we're going to draw a little squiggly line. Boop. <laughs> it broke a little bit, so I'm just going to go back. So we're wrapping it around, and then we're going to create some little lines. I don't know the technical term for parts of mushroom, but you know when you cut a mushroom open and it's got those little like sections. I love it. <laughs> it's super technical here. <laughs> Almost looks, yeah, I'm not even gonna try to explain I it. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's got these two little lines on the side, just so some more detail. And then we've also got um, a lighter shade on the side to create kind of like a highlight. So we're just going to do that on this side here. Not super precise, just kind of like a starting of a rectangle that we pull into a point. So instead of a full rectangle, we kind of follow the shape of the dome of the mushroom. I also chose to um, put a little bit on the stem. So just underneath to kind of create a shadow so it doesn't look too, too flat. Marcy says your nails are always so gorgeous and beautiful. Oh, thank you, Marcy. I appreciate that. Okay, we got this little half mushroom guy over on the side, so we're not going to have a full squiggle, but we're going to do a little squiggle just so it doesn't look like it's been left out and forgotten. Just to add some detail, then we're going to do those two little... Boop, boop. Then I'm taking that mid-tone that kind of um, stretched out rectangle highlight on the side here. Hold that down. Okay, so we've got our little mushrooms. Now we just need to go in and we're going to add the scent. Oh, geez, I almost forgot about our little flowers there. So I'm taking my palette here and what shade did I do? I think... Same one that I just used for the mushroom, the mushroom highlight, this kind of mid-tone nude. And we are going to just outline the very outer rim of the little petals that we built or painted. Using my painter two brush and my shaky espresso hand. It was just an espresso kind of day today, you guys. Yes, Marcy, that is quite the palette. Actually, I keep staring at it. Because <sighs> it it's quite full and definitely you can tell she's an artist, you know, Aww. with all the different uh, color mixed tones. tones and... It's funny because you're like, you, I've got the mix and I'm like, no, that's not quite right. <laughs> No, that's not quite right. Yeah. Even here, me and Christina, <laughs> this morning, <laughs> I, I, I am pretty good when it comes to colors and, and tones and looking at something and being like, oh no, that has green in it or that has like a tint of red in it or something. So her daughter was getting ready for school this morning and they sent me a quick video and she said, is this shirt, what color is this shirt to you? <laughs> I said coral. What did you say? So I was like, no, this is definitely orange because we needed an, an orange shirt today because they were all wearing orange shirts. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, yes. And um, 
So she's like, no, it's pink. I'm like, no, it's definitely orange. So we sent it to her grandma and Natasha, as well as her, her aunt. And two came back coral, and the other <sighs> one came back orange. I was like, yep. <laughs> so it definitely it depends on how you see colors, yeah, right? Yeah, it's weird. true. It's true. So I outlined that with the same color for my mushroom, and now mm -hmm. I'm going to take this darker shade, mm -hmm. and we are going to do um, just the center. So of course this isn't a full flower, so we're going to do half a center, so just a little half circle. I'm going to wipe off the excess from my brush, because then while this gel is wet, I'm just going to pull out little, little lines of gel from that center portion working all the way around the flower. And you know what, this side doesn't really have much flower showing, so I'm just gonna do some little flicks to create some detail on that, so it doesn't look like it's unfinished. Doesn't have to have a lot, but we still wanna make sure that we put a little bit of effort into this guy. You can't leave him out. Okay, so now, Let's go ahead and add some dots to the center of our little daisies that we made. And then we're going to put some darker dots of yellow in the back. And then our little design here is done. Yeah, that looks great. Awesome. So let's do, let's do the darker yellow because I really like this shade, especially with that bluey gray background. It's really complimentary. So just doing a little dot. Dot there. Dot there. little dots and then I'm gonna load it again and we are just gonna scatter these dots all over the nail not too close together but just to add some interest in the background too so it's not so empty those ones are a little close together but that's okay dot there And with designs like this, I mean, it looks great matte or shiny, but I find with um, designs like this, sealing them matte always shows off all the details and all your little brush strokes and everything really, really well. So let's seal this one matte. I'm going to pop that in for a cure. And then this is just a sample of what you could do with a design like this. I've done a couple of French nails and then, of course, went a little crazy with some bling and some studs and some caviar beads kind of like a bohemian feel, I guess. Um, but this would be a really cute feature nail for a client who maybe wants a little something special for fall but isn't necessarily super keen on having a lot of stuff going on. Don't forget the other little flower on the other side. Oh gosh, did I forget something? I did! Thanks, Dawn. See, I'm glad I have you guys. I forgot this one. I didn't see that. Before. I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Let's go ahead and see. I'm talking about not forgetting anyone, and I forgot one. Poor little guy. Oh, poor little flower doesn't deserve that. I think my tongue was just hanging out. <laughs> Concentrating. Good thing no one can see Oh, it. <laughs> thank goodness. Jeez Louise. I'm sure I'm not alone, though. I'm sure there's people that... uh you may not want to admit it while they're watching right now, but I know you stick your tongue out too when you're working. The nice thing is now though, wearing a mask, nobody can tell. <laughs> totally. Okay, pop that back in there. Okay. Dun dun da We are gonna use our beautiful matte top coat. I'm gonna give it a good shake hand beforehand because I think this bottle has been at my desk, um, my nail desk at home for a little bit. So if you guys ever finding that um, your mat isn't coming out as matte as it normally does, just give your bottle a good shake upside down because sometimes over time the, um, the matte kind of particles and pigment in your bottle can settle. So it just needs to be redistributed. No big deal. Give it a good shake and it'll be good as new. Alrighty. Let's seal this with matte. I've kept my um, my painting pretty flat, but um, as I've mentioned before, you guys, if you're ever doing a hand-painted design and you find that maybe you've been applying your designs a little bit thicker in areas and you need to um, smooth it out before your top coat, you can always use our tacky top. Use our tacky top first, put a layer of that on the nail, cure, 
and then go in with your mat or your no wipe and that'll help create an even smoother surface. Just doing a nice even coat of this mat over the entire nail. And again, I wanna reiterate, this is not an original pattern. Um, I was inspired by um, a, a creator of paper products on Instagram. Um, I'm going to be posting some pictures of these, the set that I've showed you today on my Instagram. And when I do, I'll make sure I take her. So if you're interested in seeing her Instagram, you guys can take a look there. Because it's always important to, cre um, to credit the original creators. And because they put a lot of work in there to their stuff too. Just because they're not doing nails doesn't mean it's their, you know, it's their art. And we, we definitely need to credit them. So again, this is not an original design, but darn, I was inspired by her stuff. It's really beautiful. We're just going to do a 60 second here on our matte top coat and then we are going to give it a swipe to remove that or reveal that beautiful mm. velvety shine. I mean, not shine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Velvety matte oh, shine. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jeez, like, you guys, it's only Wednesday. <laughs> what does this mean? Yeah. Oh. I love it. Oh jeez. But you caught it. At least I, you, you know what? It. And it took me a second though. I had a blank stare on my face. You guys can't see, but I was looking off to the side like, wait a minute. That didn't sound right. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. <laughs> wait a second. It's okay. I do that all the time. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Let the mat cool just for a few seconds before you give it a wipe too. Same with our tacky top. If you use our tacky top as your ta uh, top coat of choice, we always recommend letting it um, cool for about 20 to 30 seconds before you cleanse the top just to ensure... Um, that beautiful high gloss shine and same with when you apply um, cuticle oil always allow your nails to cool a little bit before applying cuticle oil so it doesn't dull the shine okay one two three there's that mat wow it's always nice to see the reveal hey that's my favorite <laughs> So there we go, you guys. Super simple, uh, fall-inspired little pattern that you guys could do here. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and thanks again for joining us on Wednesday. It's always fun, always a pleasure. Don't forget, our color gels are on special this month for 20% off. Such a great deal and a great time to try them if you haven't had a chance yet. Crystal, do you have any final... Yeah. Final words? Yeah, um, just as a reminder, October 1st, we have our six new gel polish colors that we are releasing for the month of October um, for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And when you purchase a six pack of our gel polishes, you do receive 10% off and a portion of sales is donated to cancer research. So we definitely appreciate all your guys' support with that mm -hmm. and hope you enjoy the new colors. Yeah. So I guess until then, you guys have a really great rest of your week. And thank you for taking the time to spend with us. We really appreciate when you pop in and, and um, interact with us. It means a lot. So we hope you have a great rest of your day. And until then, I guess we'll see you next time. Lots of love. Love you. Bye. Bye.